one. Three, two, one. Hey everybody, it's time for another CSS trick screencast. This one is going to be amazing. It's going to blow your mind with what is possible as far as like visual testing of apps. This is stuff that like up until recently, I really didn't have any idea it was possible or whenever I've heard of it, I assumed it was so problematic and weird and hard that I just never even wanted to go there. Turns out none of those things are true. Thanks to this app called Percy. Uh, the URL there is percy.io. You're looking at it on your screen right now. I'm gonna, I want to show you right in the first few minutes of this like how powerful this can be, and then we're going to set it all up from scratch so you can see how you might be able to use it in your app. It's pretty cool. I'm here with Mike Fontanakis. Fontanakis, right? <laughs> Fontanakis, yeah. Fontanakis. I screwed it up. Anyway, Mike th is <laughs> from Percy, right? So we have yeah, the, the I am the CEO and co-founder, and I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, thanks. Uh, um, so, so, yeah. We, so we're gonna do this right. We're not just screwing around here. We got the, the man himself here to help with this. So I thought that one of the coolest ways to do this would be to just show like a local website and what the possibilities are, like the like the the awesomest thing that Percy can do. So I've spun up a local site here. You can see that I'm on localhost, and this is using a um, a static site generator called 11T, like 11ty.io. You can go check that out. It's just a it's everybody loves it lately. It's this just wonderful static site generator product from Zach Leatherman. And there's um, we're gonna just to make this feel real, uh, you know, we're gonna use Netlify too. So I've I've gone to this uh, t t what is it templates.netlify.com. They have ooh, templates. I think maybe it'll redirect. They have a bunch of templates. How did I screw this up? It's going to come up of like different static site generators that you can just click like one button and it like pushes this template to your GitHub profile and deploys it on Netlify in like two seconds. It's uh, it's actually kind of amazing and it's a great way to get started with development stuff. But I've done that and I picked the 11T plus Netlify CMS boilerplate. And I literally just I just did this minutes ago with Mike and we spun up this local website. So it's this one here. And so I've done so little to this, but we did um, open up the package.json and we ran like a npm install on it. And then there's a, a command to serve it. So I did, you know, npm run serve or whatever. And, uh, and that gives you this URL, and we visited the URL, and here it is, how great it is. We actually added this button <laughs> element to it, but uh, we've spun up a site. Now you can imagine using this to build your own site and how Netlify is so cool, I can just make changes and send them up to master, and it just gets deployed to my live website and all that. But what, where Percy comes in here is like, let, let's say I make a CSS change of some kind. And so, you know, I'm not super familiar with this, but look, look at the top here, we got a color, blue is blue and i could just play around in here and say oh blue is green let's say and you know this website is set up to hopefully you're not colorblind but if you are let me explain it to you the colors that were blue on this website uh changed to green because this variable the css variable must be used all over the place to change like the header color and the button color and stuff and now i've made a significant visual change to this website i'm excited about it i want to push it live so i go and do that uh, but let's say you know that was intentional but let's say it had unintended side effects that's where percy comes in right mike yeah, totally. I mean, so, you know, you're changing that from blue to green and you, it's easy in this site because it's, you know, it's pretty small. It's got a couple of pages, but you can imagine yeah. if this site was, you know, 500 pages, a thousand pages, lots of different UI states. It's really hard to figure out how, what effect that's actually going to have on the site. Um, so Percy gives you a visual review process for this directly in GitHub PRs. So you can see across all of these different states, across all of these different UIs, you know, what is actually going to change in your site uh, day to day. It sort of gives your team this visual review cycle. Yeah, yeah. So what I've done here is I guess we've done a little bit more work too in that we have master, but I cut a branch called new colors and I'm about to commit this change where I'm changing blue to, from blue to green, which is crazy, but bear with us here. And I'm going to say changing blue to green or whatever, a terrible commit message uh, and just send it up. And of course I'm sending this to github.com, you know, so I, I already have this in GitHub. This is my GitHub, uh, my public GitHub for this project that I just pulled down. And I guess we'll be able to see that as a commit on that branch, I suppose. So if we went to, you know, new colors. Yeah, you and, should be able to create a pull request right from that. 
Yeah, I mean, we can see the commit. We just live in GitHub like we normally are. But let's make a pull request for that change. Um, do we see it in here? Why isn't it? I want to make a new pull request. Is it going to suggest yeah. one from new colors? And it's going to have that change in there? Cool. Let me just create yeah. this pull request. Yeah, what were you going to say, something? I was just going to jump into this point. So, like, you know, we're all used to doing this kind of code review where it's like, okay, great. some Something changed from something <laughs> to something else. You right. know, in this one, it's obvious, but we're all used to thousands of lines of code Absolutely, changing. It's yeah. really hard. There's no context here to understand, you know, how is this going to visually impact my site? Um, so that that's the problem really Percy was built to solve is how do we like how do like developers get confidence in this very early on in the process you know not in some like later manual QA state and not not like on some staging server but like on every commit how do I know what pixels are changing yeah that confidence is a big deal so I'm looking at like this you're right this is just a trivial change but we're so used to looking at a pull request like this even even when we create the pull request if, I, if it's my responsibility yeah. it's really other people's responsibility to come in here and look and be like I see what's going on here. What did they do here? Um, I don't know. It looks good, I guess. And you put your little thumbs up in the comments or right. whatever you do. And we but see how can like you be really take a, sure? Take a screenshot, right? They'll like they'll take a screenshot of the before and after, and like when you click, click create pull request there, yeah. they'll just like throw the uh, they'll throw the before and after in the screenshot uh, in the in the GitHub PR description of one but, page you know, that's <laughs> of one page of the thing that yeah. they think they found that they changed, but you know you're relying on your memory to remember like all the different pieces of this, and, and also on like local you know you have to pull down the local branch and get it set up and then click through to the right states. So right. yeah, it's really it's really right. hard to get context. From what you know, what code level changes? And we know in the in the, they, in the conversation around CSS, how the global nature of CSS is. Uh, you know, totally. most people just aren't, aren't necessarily working in scope yeah. styles these days, and uh, it's just kind of the way it is. So it's nice to have some confidence in, in in when you're working with your team to know that what what happened really happened. So that's just the the preamble. Let me actually make this this pull request. And I'll spell things right, whatever, <laughs> create pull request. And I think a lot of us are also used to this kind of thing too, right? Like t when you make a pull request, it triggers all kinds of things that are going to happen. Let's say you have a set of JavaScript tasks that are going to run. Let's say you're running your, you know, wh whatever else, your, your mocha and chai Winters. tests or your yeah. Cypress or anything. You yeah. run all these things, and and they're, those are connected to GitHub. This is a very powerful screen right here. This is a wonderful screen. That's like, is everything going okay? Oh my God, my Circle CI test passed. That's great. You know, thanks Circle CI for running my tests for me. Hey, thanks Netlify for getting my preview of this pull request ready. It's an incredible thing that Netlify does. They give you this special URL to go to go check this thing out. But anyway. This is where Percy comes in. Look at my purse. Look at look at the X next to Percy. What's going on here, Mike? Right. So there's what Percy's saying is like there are 13 visual changes that need review as part of this change that you've made in this PR, right? Yeah. So you're getting all this like you know unit level confidence and functional level confidence and like linters and other 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 uh, you know uh, CI statuses and other pieces of like confidence around your uh, changes. But there's really no, uh, unless you go and dig around and look at it and do manual QA, you, you don't have any way of knowing uh, you know, exactly what's going to change. So that's what Percy does is we drop in here and say, hey, you, there are some visual changes that are about to go out. Like, do you want these changes, yes or no? I'm going to click this thing. I need to know. I need to know Let's what these 13 it. changes are. <laughs> so it's going to send me right over to Percy where we have this site already set up. And don't worry, we're going to get to all this on how to set it up. Um, but th I wanted to show you this right away in this video is that, look, so... I guess it was blue, but we literally changed it to green. So this one on the right is showing me red now, but don't be fooled. We're not changing it to the red is, is the diff, right? It's like this has right. changed. Anything that's red over here is like you should you should focus in on that. That's yeah. that's what has changed. Yeah, so if we, I click this, it'll this show like me. The, uh, totally. Yeah. We think of this like the uh, the code diffs that you're seeing in GitHub, right? Where they're like, you know, it's a side by side here on the left is like what was in master and on the right is what's coming from this pull request. And then Percy shows you all of the different screens, you know, uh, pretty instantaneously across all the different pages of your application. And you don't have to, you know, try to figure out which ones have changed. Percy just tells you like, hey, these 13 pages have changed. Right. Um, and and if you if it doesn't affect it, if it doesn't affect, yeah. you know, let's say if a thousand pages on your site and only four change, it's only going to show you those four. Right. It's not like I have to approve right. a thousand pages. 
Right, exactly. And then so we're, all we're doing here is showing you the visual diff between the two states, and then you can just click it to sort of you know toggle it back and forth and yeah. figure out like, oh, did I mean to make this change yep. or not? You're like, right? I get it. Yeah, I did mean to do that. Yeah. yeah, I did mean to do that. Or if you've you know if you're in fast mode here and you're like, yeah, 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 I th this literally is what I did. I, there's an approve all button at the top there. Mm -hmm. But this is the moment where I might scroll down and be like, I meant to do that, meant to do that. Oh, I changed something in the footer. Well, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, yeah. And that's where I'd be like, you know what? Actually, I'm just going to pop back over to my code base here and have a little fix key. Uh, in which case, it would, you know, I'd go through the same thing. The pull request would be updated. Tr Percy would re-trigger, and it would, you know, cause this this to change, right? It would. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So let's say I love yeah, it though. Then, uh, okay, tell me. Yeah, great. Oh, I was also just going to say, so then, you know, you also got those like responsive widths there where you can click like 375 oh, yeah. and you've also got the double browsers too. So, you know, you're, this is like a big part of the the uh, part of visual testing that you're really, it's helping you become more efficient in your workflow is that you can automate away all of these different things that you would have to do manually, you know, across like different browsers and different devices and different screenshot widths and responsive widths. Um, Percy will highlight for you the changes that uh, we think are most relevant for you to look at and say like, hey, do you want these changes? So, you know, if your button disappears on only mobile, uh, only a mobile responsive width like that, that'll be called out. Yeah, so you can look at the original. That's just very so, cool. Yeah, and then when you're happy with all this, you just hit approve and you know, go forth and so merge the, the pull requests. The, the, the approval process now will have told GitHub that um, you know that all three of my connected things now are good to go. And we actually did go behind the scenes here. We went and told GitHub, don't even let the pull request happen unless all of them. That's kind of an optional thing you can yeah. set up in GitHub, uh, which we did on purpose. But now that they've passed, everything's all green. Great, GitHub does a great job of making this look very happy and good. So I guess if you know what might be kind of cool here is to go look at. Let's see. Let me find. Isn't it this one? So this should be blue still, right? Oops, that's not. I want to look at that Netlify's actual like live version. Oh, the hosted, of the uh, hosted version of it. Yeah. Yeah, the hosted version of it, which this could be mapped and probably would be mapped to my. That's not the right one. It doesn't have the button, right? Is that the, the old one? It's Maybe called, it's. Yeah, I, I think it was organ. It's organized by the recent one that's been pushed to. So that's why it was on top. So this one has the blue button, but we've changed it to green because this merge request hasn't been pulled, right? Or or did I did I approve it? No. So it's gonna change once I confirm the merge, which was okayed by Percy here. Then Netlify will be like, okay, I I get it, and I'll uh, I'll make I'll make it green. So it probably only takes what. 20 seconds or something for the site to rebuild. I guess we don't have to wait for it, but rest assured, Netlify is yeah. doing its thing and it's going to you know, change to green here momentarily. Right. Any, the, anyway. The, and I love this because there's also like, there's this huge, we're, we're narrowing the gap between like, you know, development and test and like production environments, but there's still these, these processes, right? Where it's like, there's a bunch of things happening behind the scenes here where, uh, you know, this is getting deployed out to production. And for bigger and bigger apps, uh, it's, you know, it can be yeah, an entire multiple full-time engineers worth of, of uh, work in DevOps, right? To like make sure that your site is getting deployed correctly. So we try to bring that visual review and, uh, and confidence like as early in the process as we possibly can. Like really let a developer know that exactly what uh, they're, the changes that they're making, like what are the visual changes across the site as you know, really in their day-to-day -day development process. Yeah, um, Percy was sort of uh, born out of a frustration that like, like why isn't there something I can just go like sign up with GitHub and do visual testing? Like why doesn't that exist? Um, and so uh, we built it, and it's, it ends up to be a really complicated problem too, which we can talk through some of the the different pieces of that. Yeah, let's do that. And so so uh, hopefully that really drives it home, like what the the possibilities are is that there really is just like a GitHub or GitLab integrated version of of just like you having your checks pass or not and being like okay this this visually changed is that okay or not okay approve or disapprove or fix it you know and uh and what's kind of great about this is that there's no training really involved here i don't know why i had that locked in my head but i kind of did is that i was like well what's right and what's wrong and i like that percy kind of treats one of the branches as just like the way the way that it is so now that that mm -hmm. merge request 
uh, went through, right? It's been closed. That's in master now, and Percy knows that, hey, master, because we configured it that way, that's the default, that master is the thing that you're always comparing to. So I don't have, mm-hmm. to, I don't have to tell anybody anything. Like all these new approved things, that's, the, that's what we're comparing against now. So Percy's made a whole new set of screenshots, right, of the, of the new master, and that's what anything new will be compared against. Yep, totally. Right. We just treat master as green, and it you know is always the deployable thing. So we just automatically advance the baseline for you. So you don't have to you don't have to maintain some set of like golden images. You can just say, yep, great, master is the one. Master is the thing that we know is is correct. Um, and you you can really iterate on your visual designs and um, you know catch bugs along the way before they get out. Okay, cool. So if anybody was just like, what's Percy and what can it do for me? Well, you've accomplished that in this video. Now, if you want to keep watching, Mike and I are going to get a little in the weeds a little bit and set this up from scratch. So if you're like, I want to do this, I want to be walked through it. I want to see somebody do it so that I can do it and have that confidence. That's what we're going to do now. But we're going to do with with 11T and we're going to do with Netlify the same way. So again, we've worked ahead only the tiniest little bit in that we uh, spun up that template. Like it, it exists on GitHub now under mine and I'll probably delete this. So don't count on this being here necessarily, <laughs> but I cloned it to my GitHub under uh, the name, my website. And that's pretty much all I've done. I've, I've cloned it locally. So I have a copy of it, but I haven't touched a single line of code in here um, whatsoever. So if, again, if I open up this uh, package.json, I'm, I'm gonna in order to get this going locally, which we're gonna need to to, to verify our changes, I'm gonna have to like yarn install. So that'll take a second. And so what's what's the plan? What are we gonna do here? Yeah, all right, let's figure this out. Um, so you've got like a new website. We're gonna make some change to it, right? And we're gonna push it up. We're just gonna like set up uh, both CI and we're gonna set up uh, Percy to uh, you know test those things for, for pull requests. So, uh, yep. I happen to know we're gonna need a little serve command to, to uh, be able to do this. So yarn run, run serve is gonna give me did I close the other one? If I didn't, it should give me a new port, right? Uh, yeah, it looks like it's looks like it's working. So there's my new home page. Yeah, I can close this old cool. one, um, and we'll do the same kind of thing. I uh, wait. What is should we do the, now? I, is that the blue? Is it blue by default? Or is that the old one? No, it's blue by default. Because remember, the variable name is blue. So where is it? It's oh yeah. In, okay. Uh, All right. Uh, static or something. We'll find it. I always, I, you know, what's the beauty of this is I don't really need to know how uh, site is what gets built. So it's assets, maybe. Includes we'll just assets. go CSS. Inline. There. Yeah, blue is blue, and I could so change it to green, but uh, that should run and change it to green. Yeah, cool. But cool. we're not going to do that yet. So, so there's no changes at whatsoever to this. I, I guess I changed that one line of package.json. But what we'd like to get going is that in this version on GitHub, there are no integrations at all. There's no Circle CI. There's no. I mean, I guess there's Netlify now, but there's yeah. no, there's none of that stuff. And the the truth is, you need Circle CI to run Percy. Don't I have that right? Uh, so it's not not totally. You can we integrate with all of the popular CI oh, services. Okay. Okay. Um, so you, you can need use any CI. You uh, so there's there are some ways that you can use Percy without CI too. Okay. Traditionally, like yeah, if you have a, like a nice CI setup with some acceptance tests, or for big applications, or if like you have a static site that's sitting there and you want to add this to it, yeah, you, you would set up um, CI and Circle makes it super easy to just like set it up for a new repo and go through it. So we'll use that today. But the yeah, main idea is you need some. I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's nice to be able to just have something run your commands for right, you. Right, exactly. Their little exactly. Structure. Yeah. So we haven't set this up at all, so I guess I need to make a new. I I have a free. Project, I don't even. I think a new repo and your. Uh, I think Circle may know already about that this repo exists, and you might just be able to say, "Yeah, start watching this thing and building it." Oh, interesting. So add project, sure and because I've connected it to my GitHub, um, yeah. then it probably knows about my website, or it might. Website. I wonder if we have to do the thing where we give it permissions for that particular project it's because it's brand new you know or maybe just a yeah oh it just a, it just ah, a refresh did it so i'll set up that project that was the other one we were doing and now we have to you know we have to read we have to follow circle ci setup here uh thankfully i have mike here to tell me what's going on there's one thing that you <laughs> that you might get 
stumbled up on, I, I probably would if I was doing this for the first time, is that, the, the, and Percy absolutely has docs on this, but we're going to go a little faster because we have Mike here, but there's a CLI for Percy, right, that we're going to use to have Circle CI run? Totally, yeah. So all we're going to do is we're going to make a Circle config that uh, tells Circle to, you know, yarn install and then Percy snapshot. Those are uh, because it's the, running the in a container, we'll kind of right. It's, so it has to. Yeah, be, it, it needs to it, run exactly. The site. So it's every time you're running your test, Circle spinning up a new container and like running the whole thing for you and running running your your test suite. And your test suite in this case, you know, since this is a static site, is just going to be just uh, Percy actually to just send up the snapshots uh, to to us. You could have other things there. You could have like linters for your CSS, and then if it's a bigger application, you could have like obviously your real unit tests and that acceptance tests and other yeah. other things. We're so going to keep Circle CI simple. is doing a lot for us. I mean, it's giving us a whole dang container. That's pretty tons. Pretty um, impressive. And yeah, we we actually have like a. This is the one part that we're going to slightly automate. I think right where we have like a con Circle config YAML that we've kind of set up that we went through uh, and like you know we figured out where to gem install and, and uh, different pieces. So we can show that. So if you just uh, it, basically it's the instructions down there, right? Where it's like create a folder. We yeah. Can just do that. Um, right. We the the part I was alluding is the CI is in in Ruby, so we have to pick Ruby here first, yeah. right? And then and then we got to do some some work, which is very minimal amount of work. We just go into our repo. Our, our rep Circle CI is telling us you got to have a Circle CI folder in here. It's got to be called. I always put it in the wrong place. VS Code makes this weird. How do you unselect anything? Okay. <laughs> dot circle ci and then within it it needs to have a config dot yml file and it gives you a version of this that you can copy and paste and be like oh i get it when this thing runs it's going to run this command and it's going to run right. these other commands and, and that's yeah. fine it's just we don't have we don't need to bundle exec rake db schema because we're not running right. like a rails site or whatever it is we're just running a simple thing so we've actually we did this in the last project so why don't i just go steal it huh from the other yeah, project totally. i'll go new window and i'll open up my old project there which was this one i'll steal the config.yml from it and i think it will make even more sense when you see the the config here yeah, i think we basically deleted code out of that thing mostly mostly yeah and then added like two lines um which are specific yeah. to um so yeah, look at how simple this is now. It runs it it runs two things: an install dependencies group of commands in which it npm installs because it needs to to pull down all the crap for 11t to run, and then it installs the Percy CLI, and then it builds the site, and then it runs this special Percy command to do the snapshotting, and that's all we needed to do. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so totally. are we ready and, and to so, shoot that back up to the repo? Yeah, I think so. We can we can totally do it. Um, okay. I also want to want to call out about these these kinds of configs too, because you know there's you can use Percy in a whole bunch of different ways and, and visual testing in general. Like visual testing static sites is great and it gives you a lot of nice benefits. But then with like really complex applications, you might have a big test suite where you know you want to actually uh, drop in specific snapshots into very specific states where you're like logged in and you know you have other other things you clicked and stuff that you've manipulated on the page. And um, yeah, what we do is we actually like take are taking DOM snapshots of those pages that are that happen in your test. Same thing with the static client; we're just sending up the HTML, and then all this stuff is actually getting rendered in Percy's custom rendering environment to make sure that it's like really fast and and that it very deterministic renders for things like you know animations and other and other things that might change on the pages. So. So that if uh, you're not actually these these snapshots are not sending up like images of the site for example to Percy we actually have this pretty novel DOM snapshotting model where we uh. are capturing the the DOM state of the page just like the HTML and the assets and then we're actually re-rendering the stuff on our side um, so we can you know parallelize it and, and do a lot of stuff uh, around Fancy. Trying to make flow, do, you use, so. do you use puppeteer or whatever for the we do have some puppeteer in there yeah yeah um, we also have a puppeteer client too in case you're like using puppeteer for uh, for running tests. Okay, so I'm sending this up to GitHub, and it's going to see that stuff, and uh, and then hopefully Circle CI will be cool about it and run it. I'm having a bit of a yeah. beach ball thing here in my cool. browser. Cool, Circle CI. Yeah, it should be cool. I don't know what's what's up. Maybe it'll release itself. Let's just give it a moment. But what we haven't done is told Percy about this project at all yet. So Percy's not really involved. I mean, I guess what what will happen is it'll try to run these commands and Percy will be like, what? I'm not aware of you yet, project. <laughs> Let's see what happens. 
Is your your browser frozen? Yeah, can you see my beach ball? Oh, there it goes. It just no, broke. I can't actually see it. Oh, I okay. was beach balling, but it it released its hold on me. Okay, so what should we look at? Should we see if the, the, um, a job ran, or I guess, or yeah, it should should have a job there in the uh, projects. No, does it? It doesn't even know about this project yet. We did add it. Oh, we didn't add it. We 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 looked we at the instructions it. and then we didn't actually do it. We have to click start building, right, for it to do its thing. Yeah, I think so. Start building. Well, good. We already did your steps, Circle. Cool. So it, I guess it'll run for the first time because it's it sees its folder and run and stuff. Should we set up Percy in the meantime, or? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it while it's in there. Uh, so I guess in Percy, we've you know, if we were at the home page, or we'd be in the app, and then we'd say new new project, I would mm -hmm. guess, and then I guess that we've called this one my website and. Uh, and we've told the GitHub app that, that it has permission to look at my website, so we have it available here. And if you don't, just follow the link there, and it'll get you there. And uh, now it's just now it's in Percy. Wow, that was easy. And it's just sitting around waiting for, for that to run. I see it's got an API key, though. I guess we're going to have to deal with that somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that key is the thing that links up the, the Circle CI to to the Percy project, right? So we'll drop that into the circle config and yeah, sweet. Okay, so it succeeded, but did it? Oops. Yeah, I think it basically just npm installed and then uh, probably actually has an error in there that says, you know, it wasn't able to, to send stuff up because it's, it's not uh, authorized. Yeah, but. so how do we see that? Let's see, it's by project. If you go to um, master workflow, it's weird that it doesn't show both my projects in here. Oh, now it does. Sometimes you got to just refresh the page. It's one of those things about websites. Uh, workflows here? Yep. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to, can we see it, the build? Is that this? Mm -hmm. I want to yep. see it run its stuff. Run tests. Oh, it does. Look at all that. Runny, run, 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 run. Okay, and at the bottom, Percy's saying, oh, I see what you're trying to do. Y'all don't have authentication to do it. Yeah, so we, we actually intentionally, it's a little bit weird to see this as like green right now. And it's like, why did this path? We actually intentionally do that because we don't want the, the Percy misconfiguration or the fact that it's, it's sort of, it's not quite set up yet. So yeah, like break to your ruin CI. your whole CI. Uh, yeah, so, right. So like stop your CI flows. So, um, and, and so what we'll have to do to set that up is just click settings, I think, in the top right, and then uh, just throw the token into the circle environment. Yeah, so this is nice that I don't have to expose my Percy keys in my GitHub repo or anything like that. You should definitely not do that. You can, I don't even know if you could do that, but in this case, uh, Circle CI will hold on to my Percy key for me, which, where do I do that? So There's environment variables on the left there. Environment variables. Yeah, that's that's the kind of the nomenclature, isn't it? So I'll grab all this and I'll say I'm gonna add a variable and it's called Percy token. It has this value. Add variable. And that's it, maybe. Now now if I push a change, then when that Percy command runs, it, it will be all, all it'll be all good, right? Yeah. Totally. So I, I actually need to change something though. Should we do the classic blue to green? Sure, yeah. Oh, this is so exciting. So locally, it has rerun and it's changed to green. So we're just de we're developers developing, doing our development, and we're gonna go to my website and we're gonna change to the the old blue to green switcheroo. This as soon as I send this up, GitHub will see it, um, and I've I no, but I did it on master, which is oh, okay. That's right. <laughs> it's interesting, but B Percy will just see it and it'll just be like, oh, cool, I'll just make new snapshots, right? Mm -hmm. Let's see it do yeah, it. Yeah, so what we're going to see is like the first set of uh, the, uh, the whatever you send up as your first master build, that's going to be what Percy uses as the, as the baseline. So we'll just happen to use green in this case and we can change it to something else. So we can see Circle CI running and it's like, dum de dum, I got to do, I got to spin up a container, I got to run yarn install, I got to install the CLI, I got to. Boom, done. Wow, that's fast. It does a lot of work yeah. in 23 seconds. I mean, it basically yeah. like invented a computer and ran <laughs> one command and then destroyed that computer. It's kind of incredible, yeah. really. 
And, now and Percy's architected too, so that we're like, uh, I like to say zero overhead to your CI suite. So it's it's asynchronous, right? It's like that your CI suite took, uh, you know, 20 seconds to run in this case, which is really fast. Percy should be done here in just a couple of seconds. Like we try to make this really, even though, you know, we're rendering potentially thousands of screenshots in a single build, if, uh, you know, in, if, yeah. if you have a big integration, um, we try to make sure that they're running in just a couple of minutes, right? So it, it really is like a big goal of the way that we've architected it is uh, make sure it's continuous, like make sure it's actually just part of your day-to-day -day workflow. And it can't, it can't be like, you know, six hours later or even an hour later, um, or even, you know, like on a six week release cycle or whatever, it's really gotta be part of like the day-to-day -day development i see that it says auto approved here that's just the nature of master right yeah totally so i've looked at this and it has created now a set the, of, the of things to the baseline of things to compare it against so i've done all of the training for my entire website already and what's also kind of interesting to me is that it just knew to do these pages because they are in the site folder and they were called dot html mm -hmm. Right, yeah. so it's just I didn't have to train that either. No config for that, none at all, which is amazing. Yeah, totally. Uh, could you configure that if you wanted to? Yeah, yeah, you can. You can. Yeah, we try to make that all that stuff configurable. And then you know, with 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 a static site, it's usually like you care about the, all the HTML pages. That's usually the the big one. Yeah. But for an application, you know, you want to be able to to really get into the weeds of like complex UI states, um, and that, that's right. really what Percy was built built for uh, from the from the beginning. So we support you know everything from static marketing pages uh, and static site generators all the way through you know really complex very large applications in, in lots of languages um, that you have, might right. have like use acceptance tests for. That's good like, to bring up here. Because this parallelized CI suites and stuff. This isn't just for the confidence of a single developer. This is for the confidence of big teams. I mean, it can be yeah. either, but I would say that the, the bigger the team, the more they're going to benefit from this, I would think. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Uh, like, I'm just a developer developing. I need to do, you know, design changes branch or whatever. <laughs> I have to name it properly. Um, I can have spaces and branch names, yeah. Yeah. Um, whatever, you know, like this is me and I'm making some tests and I'm now I'm going to switch it back to blue, I guess. I mean, I know I know we're not being terribly inventive here. I apologize, but you can imagine this could be I could be changing padding. I could be changing a background image. I could be changing every aspect of this site. This is not just a color testing tool, right? It's a literally anything's changing tool. Should we take a look at how that looks? Like, what if I moved the headline like over to the left a little bit? It would catch that too, or is it, is color kind of better? To... Sure, yeah, whatever you want. Uh, well, whatever. Let's just leave it alone. Um, to blue, I just wanted to call that out. We we keep doing these color changes, but it's this is mostly about testing the integration anyway. So I've published a brand new branch, of course. GitHub is going to see that, and this is a familiar screen on GitHub, which is like, oh, I see you've pushed a new branch. Would uh, It's trying to help you make a pull request. Well, thanks, GitHub. I think we should make a pull request. Thank you very much. I'm going to create that pull request, and we'll see, you know, I, you know, I guess the, these were probably already running, but now that the pull request really exists, now we can see them running. Um, and we have Circle CI in there, and I'm... Oh, there come there. They're all in there. Fantastic. So we could see it running there. Oh, by the time I clicked over here, it was already done. Uh, but but we're not. Percy's going to say no, right? Because we're there's yeah. Be... yeah well, well, we're going to say like here's some visual changes you might need. Yeah, it's not uh, saying to, you have yeah. failed. It's saying you, you should look at this. Right. It's sort of like based in what what GitHub gives us as per uh, you know settings there. Okay, so Percy is working on its its checks here and making it's going to make a whole new set of screenshots that it's going to compare to this set of screenshots that it already has for Master. So should we go watch it? Watch it do its thing here. It is uh, un unreviewed. It's saying yeah. So if we go take a peek here, look, this is just what we are expecting, isn't it? That it's that there's that there's. That we're seeing the red not because the design is red because it's showing this is the new design and the red is what has changed mm -hmm. the visual yeah. diff and uh yeah like check it out on mobile too like uh yeah. that's kind of a fun thing too is like you can see without having to pull up a mobile device and without having to like configure chrome and you know dig through in a mobile responsive with 
you can see like exactly what's changing in the mobile. Right. And that might even catch other problems, frankly. Yeah, you know? sure. And I can flip over to Firefox here and see the same exact thing there. That's pretty impressive stuff, really. So let's say we love it or we don't or we're going to make changes or whatever. This pull request now, it, by the time I even change tabs, Percy has told GitHub that it's all good to go now. I can merge the pull request, confirm the merge, and of course, all the rest of my flow will go it'll go out to netlify or whatever else and so it's not that you know oh. like we covered this it's not that circle ci is required for this it's just some kind of ci is required for this or you know like mike said there's even other ways to do it but you can imagine purchase this tool that has apis that run things netlify isn't required for this we just did it because it was a nice flow kind of thing the important part here is this how nicely integrated into the workflow it is it's this it's this confidence building tool that that you're not pushing out change. i mean i can't even tell you throughout my career how many times i have pushed a change to a website that was not intentional mm -hmm. <laughs> countless Same. yeah 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 how many times right like it's just so hard to get to get visibility into those kinds of changes even still as a software engineering team right so um yeah i think that's 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 a lot of like that's where we really get joy is when we even in our own application where we're like oh hey like i'm gonna add padding to this thing i didn't mean to and just like you catch bugs right. before they actually go out right that's like a huge it's a, it's a fun moment to catch that stuff before it actually goes out. It's a big right? deal, and it's nice yeah. to know that it's not. I mean, you know, there's. It's great that these technologies have started to exist, but it's so great that, yeah. You know, I mean, I don't. I've never seen it and any other tool like this in a way that makes it this this accessible. You know, like I would, I would just, I would feel overwhelmed by it if it wasn't uh, for Percy. And now look at this little video, little shorty video we did together, and we already have it 100% integrated on our site. You know, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Nice. Uh, that yeah, was fun. That was fun. So so Mike, thanks so much for joining us and telling us telling us all about Percy and, and helping me understand it better. And hopefully there's you know, if anybody's got any questions, feel free to use the the comment thing or get in touch with them about it. I'm sure they'd be, they'd be I'm sure the team at Percy would be glad to to help you understand how to use it better. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for thanks for having me on, Chris. And um, yeah, it was really fun to walk through that with you. Yeah. Cheers. Till next time. Cool.